Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? There's another paid request, this time from Nick. He sent a very generous PayPal request. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, what have you, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for, like I said, Nick wanted me to do a commentary, which I will admit was a pretty boring one. So I apologize for that. But he also wanted me to do a review of The Dark Knight from 2008. Again, for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under the video. Now, The Dark Knight, at the end of the day, I think it's just okay. I had not seen the film for maybe 10 years or so. So that's when the commentary was listed to the dialogue and trying to remember the stuff again. Uh, you know the story of the Dark Knight. I don't need to go into the plot of the Dark Knight. When I first saw Batman Begins the Dark Knight, Batman Begins I was never really big on. The Dark Knight, I thought, maybe it's okay. But there's other films of 2008 I enjoyed. I enjoyed the first Iron Man more. I enjoyed Ramble 4 more. Among other films, but like, okay, you know, it's there, you know, there's positive, some stuff I don't like, some stuff I do. Yes, I much prefer Tim Burton's Batman films that, in retrospect, but yes, I prefer Robert Patton, Pattinson's film a lot more. How people feel about this film and other films is how I feel about Robert Pattinson's Batman, and vice versa. And then, when The Dark Knight Rises came out, and I reviewed it, and the review is still up, that was what, 2012, give or take, I got so much hate, death threats, threats against my mom, threats about all this stuff, to an overwhelming degree, that made me very lukewarm on Nolan fans, lukewarm on Nolan himself, lukewarm on the franchise, Kind of like you get too close, you get burned, and that burn simmers for a while. With time passing, I still don't like Babin Begins that much. I still hate The Dark Knight Rises. This film, I would give like a 3 out of 5 stars. I don't think it's a bad film, I think it's okay. There are other Christopher Nolan films I like more. I would say I much Inception is my favorite. I would say I like Memento a lot more. I would put Insomnia with Al Pacino above this. Uh, Dunkirk I'd probably put above this. Like if you're telling me which would you rather be watch, again Inception is my favorite Nolan film. Memento would be second. Interstellar I was liking, but I don't like the third act. That helped that kind of ruin the film for me. I don't hate Interstellar, but the third ad I do not care for with where the results of it, so to speak, where like really that's what okay. The whole paradox thing it was doing. Positives. It's a well shot film in terms of lighting, in terms of bits of a camera work and during like the car chase scene with the the camera panning back while the truck flips over uh, it is not a cheap looking film to say the least it's a slick looking film in terms of photography cinematography I can give you that supporting cast I mentioned this like 50 times during the commentary the supporting cast is great because you have people from Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon, Morgan Freeman as Lucius Fox, you got Michael Jai White and Eric Roberts as some of the bad guys, you got, let's see, I said, Michael Caine as Alfred, Aaron Eckhart, I think, definitely does a better job than Tommy Lee Jones did as Two Face. Because Batman Forever, I'm not really big on either. Yes, I mean, this is definitely better than Batman and Robin. That's not saying much. 
and of course, Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger stole the show. Heath Ledger, anytime he was on screen acting, he did a great job. I love the bits with the Joker where he, his stars, he keeps telling different stories. I thought that was a really neat idea. His performance, he was crazy and eccentric, but he was very interesting. He was entertaining. He worked very well as the villain. He was a great Joker. I don't know who my favorite is because I like John Nicholson's Joker. I like Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, and I like Heath Ledger's Joker. It's hard to pick a favorite. I think usually I say John Nicholson because that's the first and nostalgic choice for me. Joaquin Phoenix though did a really good job as well. The only bad Joker I think of is Jared Leto, who sucked ass as a Joker. But yeah, Heath Ledger, it's sad that he died way too soon because of the accidental prescription drug overdose. He was only like, what, 28 years old? I did, he did a wonderful job. I, I liked his version of the Joker. And there's his take on morals and wanting to test people on their morals. Are they as morally civilized as they think they are? Or are they really truthfully bankrupt? as individuals just like he himself is and the hip is it the hypocritical nature of people where they think they're holier than thou and as good but they're not as good as they think they are with that said you go to the opposite again so I mentioned Heath Ledger supporting cast decent look to the film like that would be the three stars so what do I not like about the film? As long as the Batman is, Robert Pattinson, how people were bored with that, I'm bored with Nolan's movies. How few That one, I was not as bored. And even I said, the running time doesn't need to be that long. But that just gravitated me more towards because of just seeing Batman throughout most of the film. And it might not be great detective work in terms of there's many films that are smarter and more specific and great details of detective work but it was just great to see Batman as a detective and I just felt him his presence more I think Robert Pattinson his voice is much more natural as Batman I like Robert Pattinson in that I like that it was more of a Batman story here, yeah, you say Bruce Wayne, Christian Bale's not bad as Bruce Wayne, but Bruce Wayne, because of the status of the story, there's not much to him in the movie, and Batman is ridiculous and silly and goofy to listen to. Anytime Batman opens his mouth, That's said I approved of you. It just sounds goofy as shit. I was laughing every fucking time he opened his pipe hole. And I'm sorry, I don't think I should feel that way with Batman. I didn't feel that way with Michael Keaton. I didn't feel I didn't even feel that way with Val Kilmer. I didn't feel that way with Robert Pattinson. I did not feel that way with Kevin Conroy. So don't tell me there's no other way for him to do it. Kevin Conroy did it on the animated series. Even, you know, Batman Beyond, it did it. Robert Pattinson did it. Michael Keaton did it. Patricia Bale's like the only Batman voice. Like, George Clooney was awful because he felt like he didn't give a shit. This is just so hammy, ham-fisted. That's not intimidating. <laughs> That's not intimidating to me. I was laughing my fucking ass off. I still do. And people get mad when I say that, but I'm not going to lie. Bale's voice sucked. It was goofy and silly. And for a movie about Batman, yeah, I think that's fucking important. But anytime Batman's on screen, I laugh. I think that's an important thing to note. I never give a shit about the Tumblr. I don't think the action scenes are that impressive. I don't. I think Nolan... He's not as fantastic as an action director as people make it out to be. He's not John Woo or any of these other guys. The action scenes at times is fine, like the car chase scene. 
But I've seen multitude of better car chases in movies, whether it be in Ronin with Robert De Niro or you may not like the movie, but The Matrix Reloaded car chase is great. Bad Boys 2 car chase is great. Again, you may not like the movies, but those car chases are pretty up to snuff. And the fight scenes, is like, it's not as shaky as Batman Begins, but the, whether the wheat sound effects or just the way it's done just doesn't have that certain it factor. It doesn't pull me in. It doesn't have that, that brutality or that oomph. Like even Robert Pattinson's Batman had that in the fight scenes. With the sound of it, it just had that certain extra punch to it, so to speak. Yeah, sorry, I had the fan on for my computer. So now you just have the fan of the AC and stuff. But it just... The fight scenes don't do much for me. The action scenes I thought were there at best. And I just, they didn't, the action scenes don't excite me and thrill me like they did for a lot of people. And I just, for a movie, because they're one of the best of all time, and there's just a consistent amount of other action films, low budget and high budget, that I will look more towards to in terms of action sequences. Whether it be spectacle, or uniqueness or anything in between so the action scenes were there Christian Bale his Batman is ridiculous the pacing again people complain about the pacing in the new Batman I was less bored with that movie than these movies and I don't think this movie needed to be two and a half hours long the whole thing with Batman going to Hong Kong and grabbing the guy in Hong Kong and leaving I think that entire bit could have been cut out you literally could just, I'm going to get him, boom, the guy's there, and we left to our imagination or stories here and there as how the hell Batman did it. Because it wasn't an exciting scene, it wasn't a thrilling scene, it was just a scene that, okay, that took about, I don't know, 10 minutes, give or take. Two-Face, I think the birth of Two-Face would have worked better in the third movie. So you have a guy... Who, and then how does Gotham deal with this hero who they thought was a hero? And then Batman has to go deal with him. I think there's, there's more mind to be dug into that. And it's not dug enough because the fall of Harvey Dent worked fairly well. But the Two-Face part seems we have to rush it. Because we're fitting in the same time frame as the Joker and all these other attributes. The Joker stuff works very well. Whether him burning this whole money. Well, I'm just burning my half. And you know, the lines that become synonymous with pop culture. Why so serious? Let's put a smile on your face. All the stuff that people mention when they mention Joker. But Two-Face almost gets... I don't want to say left behind, but... He's two-faced, now we got to kind of rush into that instead of more of a, I want to say build-up. The build-up to becoming two-faced, as in, the build-up of Harvey Dent as a character, that's fine. That's why I think it should end with him being burned, and then we know in the next one, oh, the birth of two-faced. And you have two-faced, and if you want two-faced and Bane, fine. Okay, Bane, Two-Face is the, the soul of Gotham being tarnished, and then Bane is the bulldozer being used for that. You know, and not have Catwoman in it. Maybe that could have been more interesting for Dark Knight Rises. And if you go into, well, wait a minute, he's the hero people want. I don't know how to work that into the script to fix that point, or... I, I don't know. I don't know how you would do it differently. I don't have the answer for that. I would need a group of other people to help me think of that. But hey, the other people that think these films are perfect the way they are, and there you go. Just, I like Aaron Eckhart as an actor. I like them in Battle of Los Angeles and Suspect Zero and other movies. And I do think him and his character could have hold a movie on his own, but 
I didn't care for the makeup. I can't even say makeup. It was CGI. The CGI they put on him in the face. I, I don't think it worked. It didn't work that well for me. That's just me though. Maddie Gyllenhaal. I don't think it was that good. I think Katie Holmes was a much better Dawes character. Rachel Dawes. I think Katie Holmes, from what I understand, was doing a movie called Mad Money, and she got to be the one of the stars of it. So it's either get to be a star of a film or get to be the small role where I die. Okay. I did see why Katie Holmes said no to it. But Maddie Gyllenhaal, I don't mind her as an actress, but she didn't really do anything for me in this role. And so maybe because it was a different actress and not the same one we followed in Batman Begins, and maybe because I just... I was indifferent at best. The death of her, I'm like, oh, it's a ballsy idea, but I didn't feel it as much. And even Batman, other than one little scene with Michael Caine, that I didn't really feel from Christian Bale's character much. Like, it felt like, for Christian Bale, other than, it's, it felt like there should be more than just that one little scene of him sitting there. Like, be even that much more, it seemed much more devastating to Aaron Eckhart than <laughs> Christian Bale. Even though he's known that character a lot longer. But it's like we have to rush through that part as well. For a two and a half hour running time. That's what I mean. Like you could have had that maybe for a third film. But again it's all part of Joker's plan. And what well, you think I was going to end this in a fist fight. I did that. I did that. But. I did maybe if you want to put that in there. And then, but then the, the t have more of Batman being mad and wanting to kill Joker but overcoming that desire to and then you have Two-Face knocked out in a coma so Two-Face is knocked out the Dawes character is dead and so then Christian Bale's Batman's like do I kill this guy do I not kill this guy have more of that emotional power for and that could give Christian Bale more to play with as an actor, more to play with as a character of Bruce Wayne. And why do I not kill? And what's his morality mean not killing? And should I push that line? And can I push that line with this character? Can I make an exception to the rule? Uh, that could be maybe more for the Bruce Wayne character to play with. Save the Two-Face stuff for a third film. Because I'd rather see Aaron Eckhart have more to play with as Two-Face, and have some, like, some makeup. There are movies where they've done good makeup of a burn effect. Even from fucking Freddy Krueger back to the day, and if you want to play more of a realistic take, you can do a practical makeup effects. There are plenty of makeup men out there that can do that. I'm pretty damn sure. But, you know, have more Bruce Wayne's moral, Batman's moral go up against that. And save the two face stuff of him, and and say that for the the third film. I did. I just think the the actual two face portion felt rushed. I think that need a bit more room to breathe. I did that on top of. I did. You need to play about Michael Keane's Batman. You know what? That was eighty nine. This was two thousand eight. That's enough time to go, you know what, let's bring a bit more Bruce Wayne to the table to make him a full-fledged character. At least in the Batman idea of why they're doing it, it's the whole thing is that he thinks it's just Batman and Batman Central and that's all that matters is Batman. And then, I just like the way it culminated in that film much more compared to this. So again, just the pacing, the two and a half hours, I felt it. That's why a lot of times in the commentary, I'm kind of sitting there going, I don't know what to say. Because as much as I don't think it's a good look, is a good looking film, yes. But there's nothing really to comment on in the background. Because it just looks like Chicago. Uh, the action scenes, there's not really much to comment on. Go, oh, wow. I mean, there's a truck that flips. Maybe the scene where he's shooting, Joker's shooting the bazooka at the tumbler. Some decent explosions. There's a good shot of when Joker's with the nurse outfit comes out and the, ho the hospital's blowing up behind him and trying to do it as much as one take and one shot as possible. That's a good noteworthy 
sequence that was shot. Not using much CGI. I'll give credit to that. But just the, the movie... In a weird way, as I was watching the film, there wasn't as much to comment on as it seems, at least to me. So, again, uh, the score, I didn't, other than the piece of music that, ba, da, 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 that most people think of when you think of Hans Zimmer these films, the rest of the score I found fairly forgettable. And I don't think it's one of Hans Zimmer's best moments. I mean, if I think of Hans Zimmer, I think of either the work he did on Backdraft, or even Broken Arrow, and, and other movies. Days of Thunder, I think it's a fantastic score. I don't know, however you feel about the movie, I'm talking about the music. If you listen just to music, here, I think the score... I definitely think the score in the Batman's more memorable. I definitely think, you know, Danny Elfman's work on Batman Batman Returns are more memorable. I don't think the score's that memorable. Again, other than one piece of music that was used in advertising and when people do fake trailers, is always that same piece of music for a good reason. It's the best part. Other than that, I think the score's very, very forgettable. And I don't put it up there with uh, Hans Zimmer, other actual greats in terms of soundtracks and musical compositions. So again, the score I don't think is as great as people make it out to be. The action scenes I don't think is, are as great as people make it out to be. Again, I've seen a plentiful amount of car chases. I've seen PM Entertainment films that have insane car chases. Car chases. I saw a PM Entertainment film where there's a car chase and your hero is riding on the back because the satellite is being dragged behind it and the guy's riding on, on it, and it's all done for real and practical. So here's like a van, there's a line, there's a big satellite dish, our hero's on it, grabbing on so he doesn't fall off. That to me, and that's a lower budget company, PM Entertainment, I think what was it, Dark Breed or some, I think it was one of those horror action PM Entertainment films. Again, you look at some of William Freakin's work. Like the French Connection, like and, and you look at some stuff, and you know it's a crime drama that sometimes remind me, reminds me of Heat, but I think Heat by Michael Mann is much better. And so it then comes off kind of a wannabe Michael Mann, and I think Michael Mann, in his prime, Manhunter, Heat, Collateral, does that better than Christopher Nolan. <laughs> so that, I mean that's why I would say Michael Mann. I do think he's a better director than a Christopher. I don't, again, I like some of Nolan's films, but I don't put him as one of the best directors of all time. Do I think he's a good director? Yes. Do I think he's one of the best? No. Again, I think action scenes is something he could work on. But that's because a lot of the time, not all, but a lot of times, he wants to take full focus, doesn't have second units and stuff of that nature, and second unit they can know how to handle this stuff sometimes they can handle it better than the director himself so I did with that said supporting cast Gary Oldman, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman grand they're all kind of doing the similar well I can't say that I mean that wouldn't be fair to say They all work well. I mean, you get you got really great, competent supporting cast, and they are in their role of support. They do support the film quite a bit. Heath Ledger stole the show. I did anytime he popped up that the pencil trick, the disappearing pencil. I mean, that's a cool scene. I make this pencil disappear and slams the guy down. Uh, Michael Jai White put a smile on that face. Again, the stars, how he tells people different stories. Do they, okay, they give away the backstory of the Joker. Oh, wow, no. Shows, he, even he scoffs at the idea, but didn't. It was my dad. Oh, no, I had a wife. Blah, blah, blah. I like that idea. I think that was clever. 
I like the look of Joker. I like the makeup and the stars. I don't think it looked goofy. I don't think it looked silly. I think it looked. Uh, that's the thing. Like that makeup is well done. Just do this bit with Harvey Dent and makeup. Does the makeup on the Joker was well done? So, supporting cast as Bruce Wayne, Christian Bale. I could deal with him as Bruce Wayne. But again, Bruce Wayne here. Again, people. If people complain about Michael Keaton, and not much to his Bruce Wayne, what's really to this Bruce Wayne? See, and that's the thing. I don't mind the Bruce Wayne part. It's the Batman. I don't think Michael Keaton's Batman was silly sounding. This, the Batman sounds silly in the interrogation scene. It's supposed to be intense, but I was laughing because each time Christian Bale was talking. <laughs> Sounds like fucking animal from the Muppets. I don't want Batman to sound like animal from the Muppets. No, I don't find it intimidating. I don't find it scary. Will you be scared? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. If it was James Woods yelling at me or some of these other actors, okay. But this, no. I'd be like, thanks for the spittle. I'd be like, here's some mouthwash. Do you need the gurgle? That's what I would say. So, I mean, that's me, though. Now, what else would I say? The, again, the score. I don't think it's as good as people made it out to be. The, the action scenes. I don't think they're as standout as people made it out to be. Again, to give credit some visuals, the end with the sonar stuff, and you see the camera move around, to look around the inner workings of the building with the sonar. Great visual quality to that. But when Batman's taking these guys out, it just, I don't know, it just, I didn't feel anything. I don't know why. I don't know how else to word it. I didn't feel anything. Excitement wise or anything in between. I mean, whether it be the sound effects felt or it sounded too soft or, or something to that effect. And also, it doesn't help when some of the action scenes have. Like when Joker's in the middle of the road. He's like, hit me, hit me. And Christian Bale's like, Aah! When he was howling, Aah! I was laughing. It was like a little kid with a temper tantrum because you didn't buy him the Atari video game. You didn't buy him the Asteroids. You didn't buy him or the Super Nintendo. You didn't buy him the Super Metro or the Super Castlevania. So little kid's like, yeah. I laughed in the fucky movie's face. And then the ending with the boats and choosing. I did it. Joker is having this plan. This game of he feels, again, moral is overrated. These people are not as morally civilized as you think they are. So you have a bunch of innocent people. You have a scumbags in a boat. Either the scumbags are going to pull, hit the trader and blow them up or vice versa. Who's going to do it first? And then the whole thing is that no, Gotham's not as evil as you think. And lo and behold, no one hits the trader. I don't buy it though. Maybe I'm just very, very cynical. Yes, I do buy that there are groups of people that to get together during a catastrophe and work, and that's the hope, and that's the desire, and that's the the hopeful gain as a humanity, as a culture, as a whole damn planet. But at the same time, you want to go so much for reality and realism. I don't buy this at all. In reality, one of them would have hit the fucking trader. I mean, either the one group of innocent people that have the time to take a fucking vote by a paper, and over 300 said yes, hit it, and then 100 said no, but then no one did it. And then the prisoners, yes, not every prisoner is... Some are there because of bad straits and bad luck and they fell and they wanted to get back up again and 
they're not irredeemable. Not every prisoner is irredeemable. But I do think with that group of people, there'd be enough of them to cause a fucking riot, overturn the cops, get that trigger, and pull it. Whether Debo from Friday is there or not. But, you know, rest in peace, Tiny Lister Jr., Debo from Friday, Zeus from No Holes Barred, he gets the trigger, throws it out. But I think before then, you'd have enough, maybe not everybody, but you would have enough crazy people, psycho murderers, rapists, to overturn the cops and fucking get that detonator and click, 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 boom. Click, click, boom. I mean, maybe because I grew up with enough action films, enough riots in prisons, that no, there'd be enough fucking people and scumbags that would just say, fuck it. I mean, you can try to kill me, but I don't hit that, otherwise I'm sure going to be dead. It's kind of like the Timely Jones quote in Men in Black. A person is smart, people are dumb, panicky animals, and you know that. And yeah, I think people as a group could be dumb, panicky animals, and maybe it's that cynical part of me. Yes, it's a film. It's a film telling the story. But I did for a movie that's trying to be so about realism. This to me is such a flight of fancy that it takes me out. I like I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Maybe just too cynical. Maybe because I know a lot of times people are dumb panty animals. One of them, especially I think the persons would have hit that fucking button. And I just don't buy the ending. I just don't buy the finale. Again, maybe it's just that cynical part of me. I know. What can I say? So, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a bad film. I would give like a 3 out of 5 stars because of... Uh, it's got a slick looking budget behind it. Good supporting cast. Heath Ledger doing a great job. I get it's what it's trying for is morals and it's plot but just not buying some pieces of the plot 100% the two-faced stuff feeling a bit rushed in the third act the Batman portions are either action I didn't care about except maybe bits of the tumbler scene to be fair that car chase I didn't care about the little fight scenes Scarecrow he was there Caught, disappeared, done. I'm like, that felt a bit anticlimactic for the Scarecrow. The way that's handled the beginning. It did feel a bit anticlimactic to that character. And at the end of the day, just... I don't think it's a bad film. I do think it's an overrated film. It's not one of my favorite superhero films. One of my favorite comic book movies. And if I'd never watched it again, I wouldn't shed a tear. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.